30 mil fãs, 300 policiais, um assassino em série, sem escapatória. Não tem como sair daqui. Escrito e dirigido pelo aclamado diretor M. Night Shyamalan, Armadilha vai te deixar sem ar hoje nos cinemas. Um show se transforma em um pesadelo angustiante. Esse show todo é Armadilha. Confira Josh Hartnett e Salika Shyamalan com atuações hipnotizantes. Armadilha, hoje nos cinemas. Garanta já seu ingresso. Verifique a classificação indicativa. What's up, everybody? Uh, as you probably are aware, I've decided to start throwing the occasional Patreon podcast up here on the Remember the Game feed as both a free sample to try to get you to come in and buy a full cookie and also just to help kill a little bit of your work week. And if you listen to this on the weekend, I mean... I'll allow it, but I'm, I'm kind of disappointed in you. This is our most recent episode of Game Patch, which is the gaming news podcast I offer to my patrons every Tuesday morning. We look at the biggest news in the world of PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, and just gaming in general, talk about new releases, I share my opinions, you, you get the idea. If you like this episode, consider signing up at patreon.com slash remember the game, and you'll get one of these bad boys every Tuesday morning, ad-free, for just $3 a month. You also get my other gaming podcast, Expansion Pass, every Thursday, along with instant access access to over 400 archived podcasts as well. Thank you so much for listening and I hope you enjoy the show. My name is Adam Blank, and welcome to Game Patch. Remember the Game Industry's weekly gaming news podcast. This is Patch 197.0, and it includes Valorant is now free to play on Xbox and PlayStation consoles. Obsidian's upcoming open world RPG, Avowed, has been delayed. Uh, it is a stretch of a whisper of a possible rumor. Half Life 3 might actually just be real after all. And a whole bunch more. It's a busy week. Your patch is installed. I've had lots of coffee. Let's go. Several episodes of experience that makes me an expert. I'm the judge, I draw the liar, and my audience is my bias to hire. Oh, baby. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Game Patch. It is our weekly gaming news podcast here at Remember the Game Industries, where we look at the biggest news in the world of video games, sprinkle some profanity on it, bake it up nice and crispy and golden brown like a delicious apple pie. Or, or carrot cake. We've, we're eating carrot cake here at the house right now. I'll explain more about it on the Rambling Idiot on Friday, but we have a lot of carrot cake to eat. And carrot cake... Don't sleep on it. If you're like, ah, carrots, carrot cake is fucking delicious. Uh, basically, we're just going to kill an hour or so of your week here on the show. That's the point. And a huge thank you to UK Band Vertical Noise for providing the theme music for the show. The song you hear every week is called A Certain Host of a Certain Talk Show. And you can find it in all of Vertical Noise's music, wherever you get your tunes. Every week, those lads fly into Edmonton all the way from the UK just to perform that little clip for the intro. And this week, uh, they let me know that they're actually writing a tell-all book about their time with Remember the Game Industries. They're calling it Filling in the Blanks. And I was quite nervous about this book but then i read a, a preview copy and it mostly just talks about my subpar personal hygiene and i think that's fair so pre-orders will be live soon if you're interested they also told me to say happy birthday angus and they said the person that knows will know so thank you to them for the theme music for the show and of course thank you to you for listening to the slightly late theme music of the show because if you're hearing this watching this or checking this out live on a stream you support us on the old patreon box and if that is the case from the bottom of my caffeined heart thank you for the support i appreciate it i'm in a great mood today again apologies for the slight delay on the show but uh, it's only about 12 hours it's you're fine it's you did. You probably just enjoyed the time without me. Uh, we have lots to talk about this week. We finally have a full week of news, which is exciting. So as always, we're going to start with the multi-platform stuff and the general gaming news. And then we're going to PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo in that particular order. Let's get the ball rolling and kick things off. I, don't, I really wasn't sure what the biggest story of the week was. I thought this would be... Uh, Eh, the comments were kind of meh, but anyway. Uh, at Summer Game Fest a couple of months ago, it was revealed that a console ports of Valorant, Riot's free-to-play first-person shooter PvP PC game, that's a lot of Ps, uh, were on the way. An open beta ran in July. It was very successful. Riot seemed to like what they saw. The game is now available on Xbox Series Everything and PlayStation 5. That is Valorant. Now, at the moment, 
talking too much and running out of breath here. At the moment, it's only playable in the United States, Canada, Europe, Brazil, and Japan, but they are working to bring it to more regions as soon as possible. Riot did say that the console versions of Valorant will have all the same features as the PC version, and all platforms will receive new content at the same time moving forward. That's great. However, it was pointed out that crossplay between PC and console is nay an option. Quote, crossplay will not be available between PC and console player matches to maintain Valorant's renowned standard for competitive integrity, end quote. And then finally, Riot is warning console players that anybody caught using a mouse and keyboard on their console will be banned. So don't get cute. Use your controllers. Remember, kids, winners don't use mouse and keyboard. Actually, I presume in Valorant, they probably do, which is why they've been banned on console. But you, you understand what I'm trying to say. So uh, I really wasn't sure. I don't know this game. Uh, you guys know me. I don't play the PvP first-person shooters because I'm terrible. Um, but I thought this was a big story. And so I thought, like, well, I'll lead with this. We'll get tons of comments. There was a lot of comments, but they were kind of like a lot of them. Were, like, Mateo said Valor won't. And I'm going to be honest. I don't quite understand. Uh, I guess it's just I'm not, I, I don't know if it's a simple replacing Ant with won't or if it's referencing something in the game. But you had a whole bunch of likes from the other readers. So I was like, all right. May, I don't know. Maybe there's something I missed. Maybe it just went over my head. But uh, Valor won't. Uh, Jigsaw wrote in and said, I hope it does well. I myself played quite a bit of it on PC from the beta through 2022. Although I do prefer Counter-Strike over Valorant, it's still a very fun game. If Overwatch had a decent player base on console, I don't see why this can't. Good luck to Riot. I mean, look, how many weeks... Have we sat here on this show and talked about, especially these free-to-play games that rely on having a giant player base to succeed and how they just die and die and die. And for every one that succeeds, there's 20 that just get run off the side of the road. This one's coming over from like four years or something of success on PC. The beta was really well received. It's an established name. I I agree. If you're like, if Overwatch had a decent player base, I don't see why this can't. I I especially if they're not going to match console players up with the PC players to just get wrecked by the mouse and keyboard nerds. I, I agree. It seems like it's got a chance. I think this one has a chance. Nostalgio said, I've dabbled on Valorant on PC. It's pretty unique and it's hard to master versus other PvP shooters. The community so far is very nice and helpful, unlike others in the genre. I'm happy it's on console now because I'm much better with a controller and I can play with my bro on Xbox. Anyway, I recommend giving it a shot for anyone that likes Counter-Strike and Overwatch and that kind of thing. Counter I never played Counter Strike, but as I've infamously said, I loved Overwatch at one point. Were Counter Strike and Overwatch similar? I always thought Counter Strike was more along the lines of like Rainbow Six uh, Siege or whatever it is, the really the really deep strategy one, where you couldn't just play as Mercy and hide behind your teammates and heal them and not get your hands dirty. So anyway, Valorant available now on PlayStation and Xbox if you feel the need to Valor. Now listen, with this next story, I know news rumors whatever about half-life 3 is exciting but we've also all heard them a trillion times and we're all like oh yeah i fucking buy it so i want to make it clear that while i'm also excited i'm i want a half-life 3 as bad probably not as bad as most of you and i want them pretty bad there was no way i wasn't going to talk about this story but i should let you know it is a little bit of a stretch so just relax your glutes just listen and we'll wait and see how the glutes shake out all right somebody noticed a credit on a voice actress's resume that said Project White Sands video game. Now, the credit from the resume has since been removed, presumably it was online, but not before it got the internet talking because this Project White Sands is listed as a project with Valve. So it's a video game, presumably, apparently, called Project White Sands being developed by Valve. And White Sands is apparently a park and missile range in New Mexico, which is where Black Mesa was located. The monkey's starting to stink a little bit. Data miner Tyler McVicker did a little bit more homework and found some info about a character in a game code named HLX, referencing some weird planets and stuff, and he feels they were going to be a part of Half-Life Alex that got scrapped. He thinks Half-Life 3 has been in the oven for a little while now, and this Project White Sands is the name being tossed around inside Valve for HLX, which he found information from referencing other planets and stuff, which he believes is Half-Life 3. So it's all just hearsay. We have a, a presumably 
video game from Valve called Project White Sands referenced on a job resume that's now been removed. And we've got a data miner saying they're finding stuff for stuff that seems to be Half-Life related. And he all everything coming together is starting to put smoke on the flames and making you think maybe just... Just maybe, all right? And I know, listen, most of the comments were people just saying it's not going to happen. I understand and I get it, right? But let's just all daydream for a minute and let's just imagine a world with Half-Life 3. I very rarely talk PC news in here, but for Half-Life 3, I'll make an exception. I'm pretty confident I've even said, if this is what it takes to get a Half-Life 3, I'll play with a mouse and keyboard. I hate that shit. I'll, I'll probably play with my Steam Deck, to be honest. But like, if I have to play with a mouse and keyboard, that's what I'll fucking do. I want Half-Life 3. A lot of comments just being critical. Not fault, I understand. But Mark Hayward said, don't get too excited, everyone. We all know that Valve can't count the three, which was to be expected from most people. Uh, they do seem to have a tendency to stop at two. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start. Said I, got a cl- I saw a cloud today that kind of looked like glasses. Freeman wears glasses. Half-Life 3 is a lock. And Captain N said, well, off comes the tinfoil hat, and on goes the hat of hopes and dreams. Remove the stone of shame. Attach the stone of triumph. Nobody had, like, there's no real news. Nobody fucking knows. I, look, I'm going to sit here and daydream about Half-Life 3 just like everybody else, but clearly Valve's bread is buttered with steam and with the steamer and all that kind of shit. I will not believe that a Half-Life 3 is on the way until it is officially announced and we're playing it. But I wanted to report it because I know I know how bad so many of us want it. And the thing is, if you've been listening to Remember the Game with any length of time, I do seem to have this funky ability to will projects into existence. So I will throw some of my powers behind Half-Life 3. Most of them are still behind Silksong right now and a new Mega Man game. But I'll throw a little bit behind Half-Life 3 and we'll just see what happens, okay? One of the most common things I hear from listeners is that there just isn't enough time in the day to play everything they want to play, which is a pain I know all too well. But what if I told you there was a way to free up more time for gaming or going outside or whatever you weirdos do, and you could eat better and work toward whatever your fitness goals are all at the same time? You'd probably call me a lying scumbag. Shout out to anyone that gets that reference. But it's true. With Factor's no mess, no prep meals, you'll spend way less time in the kitchen because Factor meals show up ready to go. Two minutes of prep, enjoy a delicious dinner or breakfast or lunch or snack, and no cleanup. You can work towards your fitness goals because they have meals to suit every diet and lifestyle. More protein, no meat, fewer calories, keto, they cover all the bases. And you can feed everyone because they have meals to accommodate that picky eater in your life. Every week, Factor offers up to 35 different meal options and over 60 add-ons. So no matter what they do or don't like, you'll have something to feed that person you love. Factor meals cover everything. And... Their meals are all chef-crafted and freaking delicious. It's summer, and even if you don't want to go outside, you have video games to play. Let Factor take care of your cooking and spend more of your time on the stuff you love. Head to factormeals.com slash RTG50 and use code RTG50 to get 50% off your first box, plus 20% off your next month. That's code RTG50 at factormeals.com slash RTG50 to get 50% off your first box, plus 20% off your next month month while your subscription is active uh this next story is kind of sad so we'll play it quickly before youtube yells at me all right i gotta stop 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 youtube will fucking yell at me i don't know why they're so anal about that song i don't want to it's the end of an era, my friend. Games or my friends, GameStop's gaming magazine, Game Informer, is no more. The magazine launched back in 1991 and lasts 33 years before this announcement. A statement on the Game Informer Twitter account reads, "Quote: After 33 thrilling years of bringing you the latest news, reviews, and insights from the ever-evolving world of gaming." It is with a heavy heart that we announce the closure of Game Informer. Thank you for being a part of our epic quest, and may your own gaming adventures never end. End quote. Now, the magazine's content director, Kyle Hilliard, said on Twitter, quote, Game Informer has been closed down by GameStop and the entire incredibly talented staff, including myself, have all been laid off. A frustrating turn of events, especially considering we were about 70% done with the next issue and it was going to have a great cover, end quote. So, officially, Game Informer issue 367, which published back in June, will be the last issue 
of Game Informer magazine. So first and foremost, obviously, all my best to everybody impacted by this, of course. I'm not mocking because it sucks, but like, unfortunately, this can't be too big of a surprise to everybody, can it, in 2024? Like, listen, I got mad love for gaming magazines too. I didn't read a ton of Game Informer. Game Pro and EGM were the two that I read. The, and of course, Nintendo Power were the ones that I read the most. But I did have a Game Informer subscription at one point. And I always enjoy flipping through a video game magazine. So this is... To see those people losing jobs, it's it sucks. It's unfortunately just the, the way of the beast these days, I think. The way of the road, as Ray would say. But uh, Tongue Punch, my fart box, wrote in and said, Without becoming a dedicated daily gaming site, the writing was on the wall here. Similar to what happened, or similar to what newspapers have been going through over the last 20 years, you have to either change your value proposition or go the way of Kodak and become obsolete. A lot of people get their news from aggregated media apps that feed you content based on your interests and then highlight the top and trending stories from there. In a way, that's what we're all doing by listening to this show. I'm paying for the service of having Adam highlight the top gaming news while also hearing his take while he's interacting with his audience. If you can't differentiate yourself, then it's a matter of time before you're gone. The irony is not lost on anyone that this was owned by GameStop, a company who is dying a death by a thousand cuts. Tongue punch my fart box. That might be the most depressing message you've ever said. Like everything, every word you just said in there was correct. Uh, Literally everything. But that's a depressing message. You're not wrong, but it was... So I, I agree with you. It's just, it was kind of just, kind of just sad. Uh, Lotus said, rest in peace. Now that they're gone, I wonder how long to my collection of them is worth something. I wonder, will modern gaming magazines ever be worth something? Like Nintendo powers and stuff are worth a few bucks now. Old game, there's like a market for old gaming magazines, but are modern magazines ever going to be worth something? I don't know. Cause now everybody saves everything. Like back in the day, like me, what I wouldn't give to go back. Uh, and I'm sure 80 plus percent of the people listening to this are in the same boat as me. You wish you could go back, have all your old toys, have all your old video games. You wouldn't have thrown out the boxes or anything, but we sold them or we traded them in or our parents gave them away or they fucking got lost in a, I don't know, a fire or whatever the fuck. And I, you know, I wonder though, but everybody saves everything now. So now I wonder if modern gaming magazines will ever be worth something. Kareem the Dream said, I remember being so excited to get these in the mail every month as a kid, back when they used to be free with a GameStop Pro membership. As much as GameStop sucks, it's nice that they kept Game Informer around for as long as they did. Very tough to see it go, even if I get most of my gaming news from old Mr. Blank nowadays. That was when I used to read them too. I I went through a phase of a couple of years in my, in my 20s where I had a GameStop membership that came with a subscription to Game Informer. And I also used to look forward to reading those magazines. I agree. And Vince Fahey said, I was bummed to hear this as I enjoyed each issue and it helped keep me on top of current game releases as they don't usually look online for that sort of thing. Is there any other magazine out there that could replace it? I was getting Retro Gamer, but it's primarily retro stuff. It doesn't scratch the itch of the current, or it doesn't scratch the current stuff itch. Anyone know of a suitable replacement for Game Informer? I don't. Uh, If anyone does, I don't know, leave it in the comments on Patreon. Let us know. I'm... I'm curious, but I, yeah, I don't know of any other game and magazines either. It's too bad. It's just, I don't know. It's like I was grocery shopping the other day and almost every year I buy a fantasy football magazine, even though I know that like half of it is fucking old news and there's injuries and trades and shit. And it doesn't matter. I just enjoy something about reading magazines. I don't know. I like magazines. So yeah, I'm curious about that as well. It's just tough. It's just, yeah, like it's. I mean, we're going back to Fartbox's comment, right? The newspapers, everything has gone that way. Everything's online now. It's too bad. We're a bunch of, uh, we're all living in the future, kids. Uh, Man 25, speaking of the future, drops next week in like seven days. And EA released a little bit of new information on its franchise mode to help build up ye old hype. They're souping up the draft. They're adding storylines and stuff to player manage or uh, to the player management aspect of the franchise mode. As far as the draft in Madden 25 goes, they're adding a new prospect board that updates in real time and it makes it easier for players to navigate and waddle through and sort players and all that kind of thing. The storyline stuff will include things like uh, dealing with the press, answering their questions about your players. You have to make sure your players aren't being lazy fucks during the offseason. You have to deal with their playing time, make them promises, and then attempt to keep them and maybe build a co- culture in your team and all that kind of stuff. Uh, now, they're talking a great game. No pun intended. EA is with Madden, but they always talk a great game. I'm interested to see A, how it reviews next week, and B, if the release of college football earlier this summer impacts Madden sales because a lot of people have been lukewarm on Madden forever despite the fact that it still sells 3 trillion copies a year, but that college football game they dropped a couple months ago has been reviewing through the fucking roof. People seem to, half the comments were about how good this game is. 
this college football game. So I'm very interested to see how Madden does this year. Uh, like I said, it drops on August 12th on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Beat on the moan. Said the success of NCAA will finally be the catalyst for Madden to step up their game and make something worth buying. I'm not convinced of that, but we will see. Roger Russell said about time they put more thought and effort into the game. Hopefully we'll see this roll over to next year's NCAA, which is great, by the way. See, everybody seems to love this game. And Jackson Campbell said, slightly off topic, but they're also adding the ability to transfer your player from College Football 25, meaning you can play your entire college career, and then you can continue it in Madden. I did not. I meant to look that up before I started. I'm not calling you a dirty liar, Jackson Campbell. I just didn't know that was a thing. Player transfer, college football, Madden 25. Need to know star, RM pick. Wow. Yes, a created superstar in college football 25, Road to Glory, can be transferred over to Madden 25. This has been confirmed by EA Sports. Well, I will give a associate producer's credit to Jackson Campbell because I missed that. Jackson, well done. So there you go. It's a smart way to get you to buy both, I guess. That's smart. I'm I'm curious, for you footballers, are you going to buy both? Or are you just going to play college or are you just going to play Madden? Are you going to buy both? I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Like, I love golf games, but I'm not playing both EA Sports PGA Tour and PGA 2K23. Like, I'm playing one. I'm playing EA, I'm playing EA Sports PGA Tour is better, but I'm just curious. Anyway, uh, I have nothing to add to those. I'm probably not. I haven't played a Madden since. I played one when. Peyton was uh, the QB in Denver. Um, and that was quite a while ago now. Holy fuck. I think that was the last time I bought a Madden was when Peyton was uh, was our quarterback. I don't think I'll be buying it this year. I don't know. Madden, like, old school Madden's good times. I'm going to start playing NFL Blitz 2000 for Remember the Game. I'm pretty excited about that. I think that is where I'll get my football fix this year is NFL Blitz. Uh, this next one, I've never played a Prison Architect game, but I've always thought it looked cool. I've always thought it looked like a neat game. Much cooler than a sequel, Prison Architect 2, which doesn't look like anything because it's been delayed indefinitely. It was actually delayed earlier this year. It was set to drop in March. Then it got bumped to September. Uh, they had some issues when they were running stability tests on the game. I don't know what the fuck they found in there, but no word on when the game is shipping now. It is fucked. Quote, our continuous eternal revenue revenue or reviews and beta test groups have highlighted areas that we need to focus on more mainly performance and content which we need to address before they launch to ensure that you the players get a good experience in the game end quote so they're issuing refunds to anyone that pre-ordered prison architect 2 and they said they're basically just going to shut up about a new potential release window for the time being and just focus on getting the game running properly that's too bad I, like i said i always thought i always thought prison architect looked kind of neat but this one, apparently not so much. Uh, Pressing X said, I can't imagine there would be many refunds in this case, meaning people that pre-ordered the game, and nobody else commented on this story. So I, <laughs> story checks out, Pressing X. You've got evidence. So nobody else gives a fuck. There you go. Uh, the stats thirds over at Circana have revealed the best-selling games in the United States of America for the month of June, and powered by the shadow of the Erd Tree expansion, Elden Ring has returned to its throne at the top of the charts as the best-selling game for the month old faithful call of duty modern warfare 3 came in at second and kingdom hearts integrum masterpiece came in at third and if you're like me and wondering how the fuck that happened i didn't realize that a steam port of this kingdom hearts collection dropped in june which obviously would be a massive spike in sales makes a lot more sense it originally released a couple years ago it's a collection of a whole bunch of the fucking kingdom hearts games so there you go if you're wondering why that came in at third the rest of the top 10 sales in the month of june in order from four through ten were shin megami tensei five Vengeance, Hogwarts Legacy, Minecraft, MLB The Show 24, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, EA Sports FC 24, and Sea of Thieves came in at 10th. Nothing too crazy in there. Fucking Minecraft, man. That game will never die. Fucking 6th again. Probably because of that PS5 port being released, but holy fuck, that game never dies. That Belgia said everyone and their mother is playing the Elden Ring DLC, and I still need to finish the original title, and I can't get good enough. That's why I won't play it, because I know I'm not good. I gotta listen, and I don't want to get a bunch of messages. It's just between me and you. Just me and you, the one listener that's hearing this. The rest of the listeners that aren't hearing this. This is just me and you. There's a there's like a five percent sliver of me that's a little bit intrigued by Elden Ring. That's five percent. Um, before you're like, oh my god, why are you playing Elden Ring? I'm probably not going to. I have like a 50 games that I want to play, and those ones I know what's gonna happen is I'm going to plunk down the money, and then I'm just going to get fucking pissed off at it. But if it ever hits like a service like Game Pass or PS Plus or something, maybe I'll fire it up on a stream or two just for the lulls. 
Because I know I'm just going to get mad and then I'm going to quit. Those games, I just no patience for that shit. But I can't help but get caught up in the hype. There's a small part of me that's eyeing it up. Uh, and the prophet formerly known as Lara Croft's Triangles wrote and said there are three types of people in this world. Number one, gamers. Number two, non-gamers. Number three, those fucking weirdos that nobody likes that live and die by the Kingdom Hearts games. Don't write it to me. I didn't say it. That was the prophet formerly known as Lara Croft's Triangles. I didn't say it. I'm not going to disagree, but I didn't say it. So, uh, yeah. Nothing else to say on the top. 10 selling games there's not really any surprises in there my fucking minecraft at six that game's fucking never gonna die unreal uh thq nordic had a showcase this last week and they revealed a couple of games one was a new darksiders game is in the works uh they're not saying a goddamn thing about what you'll be doing in the game who you'll be playing as when you'll be doing it they've just confirmed you'll be doing something eventually in the world of darksiders GameSpot says this is the fifth game in the darksiders uh, series and the teaser trailer that thq dropped showed the charred council and the words be prepared to ride again flashed across the screen no word on a release date or anything i presume this one's a while away but when it drops it is a expected to ship on pc ps5 and xbox series everything and uh, i have no idea so here's the thing i posted that story thinking that would be the one that got comments nobody said a word but then doug dorn said i know it's not really the right place but thq nordic also announced Wreckfest 2 a sequel to the best demolition derby game racing game ever and so doug left a comment about wrestle Wreckfest 2 on my dark sider story and i have WrestleFest 2 in my notes but i didn't post it because i didn't think anybody cared so, Doug, this is for you. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to read it as I wrote it before I saw your comment. I don't know if any of you are into uh, the Wreckfest, but I do know the first game did pretty well, well enough to greenlight a second one. THQ Nordic also announced at the showcase last week that Wreckfest 2 is on the way, and it'll feature more of the car crashing raking, racing stuff that made the first game a success. Unfortunately for you, Wreckers, that's all they're saying. No word on a release date, gameplay details. They're not even saying which consoles it's going to ship on, but eventually you'll be Wreckfesting again. So, I should have maybe posted that would have skipped darksiders i just i apologies to doug dorn nobody else commented and doug dorn only commented on darksiders to bring up Wreckfest. so shout out to Wreckfest, i guess uh that's all your general gaming news we still have three stops and we still have stories in all three stops it's a nice busy week this week so i'm gonna queue up the playstation load up time i love so much while i drink some water And let's check in with the station that plays. And unfortunately, we are going to start with a story about layoffs. I fucking hate these stories. Bungie, the studio behind that uh, Destiny 2 game you may have heard of, has unfortunately announced that they're laying off about 17% of their staff, which equates to 220 people. In a blog post, Bungie said in part, quote, due to rising costs of development and industry shifts, as well as enduring economic conditions, it has become clear that we need to make substantial changes to our cost structure and focus development efforts entirely on Destiny and Marathon, end quote. And they said all levels of staff are being impacted. It's not just the it's not just us in the trenches. It's everybody all the way up the ladder. Those being let go are receiving severance pay, a bonus, and they're getting health coverage for an undisclosed amount of time as well. So at least they're taking a little bit of care of them. Uh, Bungie also revealed that an additional 12% of their staff will be moving over to Sony Interactive, who owns Bungie. Uh, a new game studio is being formed within Sony, and it'll be developing a brand new game that's set in a new science fantasy universe. They're not really saying anything about the, like, the game that's being developed. As for the reasoning behind the layoffs Bungie went into a little bit more detail and went on to explain that they stretched themselves too thin and that along with a broad economic downturn uh or that excuse me along with a broad economic downturn really just gave them no choice quote we were overly ambitious our financial safety margins were subsequently exceeded and we began running in the red after this new trajectory became clear we knew we had to change our course and speed and we did everything we could to avoid today's outcome even with exhaustive efforts undertaken across our leadership and product teams to resolve our financial challenges these steps were simply not enough end quote so I mean, the story basically comes across as Bungie tried to do too much and it blew up in their face. Now, before we move on from this story, 
First and foremost, obviously, all my best to the 200 plus people that just lost their jobs in this fucking industry. But also, this is a little bit interesting. Bloomberg is reporting that prior to these layoffs being announced, a spin-off Destiny game was in the works. It was codenamed Payback, and it would have been a third-person game that focused on both combat and puzzle solving. Apparently, it would have drawn some inspiration from Genshin Impact. It would have been another multiplayer title. Bloomberg says that this game was actually canceled about two months ago, with most of Bungie's staff being moved over to Marathon, we just talked about that a minute ago that is a reboot of an ip of theirs from the 90s that's set to release next year so it sounds like everything in the world of bungie right now that's left outside of that 12 percent that just got moved over to sony is either working on destiny 2 stuff or this upcoming marathon reboot so that's too bad man i thought destiny was doing really well makes you wonder what decisions they made that's too bad and obviously like i said my my best to anyone that just lost their job their job their job uh, that dude, Jake, said, these stories always make me sad. I wanted to be a video game designer when I was younger, and these always remind me that I unfortunately made the smart choice to just play them instead of make them. You know, that's fair, fucking fair, Jake. I, I never really had any ambitions of being a video game developer, but I have two friends that at least, still, I haven't talked to them in years, but last I talked to them were working at BioWare here in Edmonton. And, uh, and yeah, they were, they were like, this is a fucking stressful industry. Cause that's what happens is you stock up staff, you build a shit, finish a game, you pump it out, you make money. And then you let a lot of that staff go until you need them again. It's, it's fucking brutal. Tim Tiani said, I'm not sure how much truth there is to the follow-up stories that keep leaking out, but they claim that Bungie over grossly oversold financial expectations back when Sony acquired them. I'm glad Sony is rolling a chunk of them into a new studio to work on a new IP. Small silver lining, but hopefully something positive comes out of the negative. I'm ready for a steady stream of new IPs to invigorate the market. This also goes for Sony Santa Monica's unnamed new IP and the other news story. We'll get there, Tim. Don't fucking spoil it. But we'll get there. I Yeah, I, it's too bad. So anyway, that's what's going on in the world of Bungie. Uh, I don't know how I missed this next story. I think maybe they were announced right after I finished last week's show. And I haven't done one, obviously, since last week. But the PS Plus Essential Games for August have not only been revealed, but they're available. Right now, if you have a PS Plus subscription of any level, you can download Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, which I think is probably the standout of the group, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, and Ender Lily's quietest of the nights that, that third one could be fake it could just be a mishmash of words and i would be like oh yeah ender lilies that's a fucking that is quietest of the nights for sure lego star wars the skywalker saga is easily to stand out if you haven't played it yet uh i played a little bit of it i've never been able to get into lego games they're neat they're cute they're charming but i just find the gameplay gets very repetitive but it's basically a remake of all nine lego movies or star wars movies in lego and uh, I played through the first two, and it was it was pretty it's a cool little game. If you're a Star Wars fan, I recommend checking it out. Again, they're free to anyone with PS Plus on any tier. Download them, and you can play them whenever the fuck you want. Uh, I wasn't sure with this next story if I should put it in the PlayStation section or general gaming news because it's about Silent Hill and Konami. And we know that Silent Hill 2 Remake will be PS5 exclusive when it ships. So I don't know what else is going to happen with any other Silent Hill games. And then when I asked Molly what I should do, she just licked herself and walked away. So I put in the PlayStation section. Silent Hill 2 Remake ships on October 7th on PC and PS5. That's great. I'm actually very excited for that. Uh, but Dusk Gollum, who has an online track record of breaking game news stories, the record's not bad, is reporting that in addition to this Silent Hill 2 remake and the other projects they have going on, Konami has yet another Silent Hill game in the works. They're not saying if it's another remake or if it's a brand new entry to the series. Good news for Silent Hill fans, right? There's a lot of Silent Hill in the oven right now. A, it makes you wonder what the fuck took so long. And B, it just makes you pray that like, if they're developing three or four Silent Hill things right now, one is going to be good. I, you Silent Hill fans will be fine. One of them will deliver. I'm, I'm confident of it. Tommy Simps said, I feel like this has been an on again and off again rumor for the past 10 years. Who knows? Maybe we will actually return to the town of Silent Hill. I, I agree that it's been kicked around forever, but I don't think the Silent Hill rumor mill has ever had as much momentum as it has right now. So... I think I, I don't doubt that something else Silent Hill is in the oven. Nomad said, as a huge fan of the series, I don't think I care what we see next. So long as they just keep the game close to a traditional Silent Hill experience, the fact that the series is getting any attention is great so long as they don't fuck it up beyond all recognition. Agreed. And that's why, like, admittedly, I've never played the OG Silent Hill 2. And as I've said many times, I will play it uh, before this remake comes out so I can review it on Remember the Game. 
everyone says Silent Hill 2 is the best one. So I'm like, I don't understand why people are so concerned about this remake. I think the remake looks fucking incredible. I'm stoked. Bring on the Silent Hill. I mean, Resident Evil is better, but bring on the Silent Hill. Uh, where was I on my notes here? Okay. And then we have three more just really quick uh, PlayStation stories to wrap up this section. I know not all will agree with me on this, but I think this is good news. And good news is great. Square Enix has confirmed that when the third part of the Final Fantasy VII Remake Trilogy drops, it'll be bringing the card game Queen's Blood... I just bit my tongue. Queen's Blood from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth with it. Apparently, Naoki Hamaguchi, the game's director, was asked if they would ever do a physical release of Queen's Blood. And he said they've had a bunch of requests, but didn't mention whether or not it would actually happen. I feel like that'd be hard. Not impossible, but it'd be a lot to keep track of and stuff. Uh, he did, however, say that a revamped, possibly even better version of Queen's Blood will be included with whatever the third part of the Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy is. No other information right now, but I fucking love Queen's Blood, so that is great news in my eyes. The Angry New Yorker said, Sweet, I can't wait to whoop some ass yet again, right? I, I mean, listen, not everybody likes everything. I understand that. But I just, I did not understand the hatred that Queen's Blood got from some people. I thought it was so good. I'll hear the argument that it should have been optional the whole way instead of having to play that one part. I'll agree with that. But I thought Queen's Blood was fucking fantastic. I thought it was rad. Venom1438 said, I still think Queen's Blood would make for a sick mobile game. Agreed. That'd be fucking awesome, actually. Because then you could bring in, like, characters from other Final Fantasies and stuff. That'd be fucking dope. I'd play that. So, I mean, there was no way I wasn't gonna... I've put, like, 100 hours, 100-some hours into the first two parts of Final Fantasy VII Remake's trilogy. There's no way I'm not playing the finale. And you know that Queen's Blood will be there waiting for me. Oh, that turns me on. That's good shit. Uh, speaking of turning you on, here's a little teaser to get your nipples hard. Sony Santa Monica is the studio responsible for the cult classic God of War games. You may have heard of them. And apparently they're working on something brand new. The LinkedIn profile of an employee of the studio lists them as a character supervisor for a new IP. And that's all they're saying. Now, sure, we're reporting news based on someone's LinkedIn profile, but a few stories have broken this way over the years. And to add more smoke to the flames, Sony Santa Monica has said themselves that they have several buns in the oven right now, so a new game that's not God of War makes a lot of sense. And I'll tell you right now, friends, after God of War and God of War Ragnarok, they will get my money. Assuming whatever they're working on is a single-player game like that, like if it's some weird online multiplayer, maybe you want, but like insert whatever fucking scenario you want as long as it's a single player narrative based game like that's what i buy playstation consoles for and i've said it many times i don't think there's maybe naughty dog i don't think there's many in the industry better at those types of games than sony santa monica so to hear they're working on something new is fucking awesome obviously we still need more god of war i gotta know what happens with atreus uh why the surgeon who's not a surgeon rose said hear me out god of tricksters wrote loki's rise we play mostly from atreus's point of view and we see it go from there yeah i've listen i i we need a game that focuses on atreus but i'm okay with a break start try something new and then go back to god of war I'm, i'm fine with that they're gods they'll be around forever take your time exciting and then just a quick note literally uh quick uh let's see if i can get through this in under 25 seconds which i think is how long the trailer is go uh the first teaser trailer for the last of us season two dropped this weekend it's only about 25 seconds long i'm not going to speculate as to what they're showing in it because i don't want to spoil anything for anybody but we do get to see ellie's tattoo we see isaac we see dina and of course joel will be there they confirmed season two will only be seven episodes in length and then they're going to do more seasons after this but they're not saying when it'll release or anything you can look the trailer up for yourself if you want to see it boom 24 seconds. I got that in faster than the the trailer. It's a good trailer, but it is just a teaser trailer. You're not going to get anything out of it, but I can't wait for that show. So fuck yeah, why not? That's all your PlayStation news this week. As far as game releases, I'll tell you right now, all three consoles have the exact same three games. There's just nothing... I want to say there's nothing big coming out because I'm actually interested in both these games. Uh, on Tuesday, Pepper Grinder dropped. I, I know most of you are like, what the fuck is Pepper Grinder? I remember seeing that on a showcase... Might have been a Nintendo Indie World showcase. I don't remember. But it caught my eye. It was a cool looking little platforming puzzle indie game where you have like a drill and you're grinding into the ground and stuff. Uh, Not what I'm going to play right away, but I am intrigued by this one. It's got a respectable 79 on Metacritic. So Pepper Grinder is out now. And SteamWorld Heist 2 comes out on Thursday. And I can't wait. SteamWorld Heist is fucking awesome. It is a tactical shooter, but it's like two-dimensional side-scrolling. Look it up. Play the first one. You'll probably love it. Then play the new one. 
I probably won't buy it day one because I have a lot that I want to get to, but I, I do intend on playing Steam World Heist 2 this year. I fucking love the Steam World Heist. Well, I, there's only one, but I love the first Steam World Heist game. So those are your new game releases. And then as far as sales on the PlayStation this week, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is 20% off. I'm presuming most of you that want it already have it, but I thought I'd give you the heads up. And the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters are 20% off individually, or the whole collection is 20% off as well. If you're jonesing for a whole lot of RPG. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You all know I love my dog Molly, but one of my favorite things about her is our daily walks. It's my chance to just get away from everything for a minute, catch my breath, enjoy a little sun, and make sure I'm focused and on track for the day. And we're all busy, right? Well, I mean, most of us, I don't know, maybe you're laying around your basement listening to subpar gaming podcasts all day, but most of us are busy. And when you get really busy, it can be easy to lose control and start forgetting to look out for yourself. It's critical to have that one thing you do for you to get your mind right and set your priorities straight. If you don't have that thing, I'm telling you, look into therapy. Having an impartial ear to bend about stuff is just so damned valuable as our lives get busier and busier. They can help you figure out what matters most, where your energy needs to be focused, and how to take care of you so you can take care of yours. BetterHelp can be a fantastic way to talk to a therapist and start looking out for you. I've said it before, but I've personally used them and it was exactly as advertised. Fill out a quick questionnaire and they match you with a licensed therapist that suits your needs. You can look at their calendar and pick appointments that work around your schedule and sessions are 100% online so a session with a therapist is as convenient and flexible as possible never skip therapy day with better help visit betterhelp.com slash remember the game today to get 10% off your first month that's better help h-e-l-p dot com slash remember the game there you go so your playstation news you know where we're headed next let's open up ye old xbox And let's check in with the nerds over at Microsoft. And uh, this this story is a little bit of a kick in the bum because I was excited for this game. Obsidian Entertainment, who you may remember from games such as Fallout New Vegas and The Outer Worlds, is developing Avowed, which is an open world RPG seemingly somewhat in the mold of Elder Scrolls. Uh, it's honestly one of the highlights of the upcoming Xbox game schedule. And I know the jokes, the old games, but it's true. I was really looking forward to playing Avowed. I know some of you were as well. And if you were... I'm sorry, it's been bumped. Uh, Xbox said, quote, so many games coming. As such, we're moving Avowed to February 18th, 2025 to give players backlog some breathing room. Stay tuned for more from our games across Activision, Blizzard, Bethesda, and Xbox Game Studios at Gamescom, including our August 23rd live stream for a look at Avowed, end quote. So Xbox hasn't actually come out and said Avowed was delayed because they're having problems or it wasn't done. They're saying it's to try to just stay out of the backlog like the, 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 the fucking smorgasbord of games that are coming out this fall across all systems, not just Xbox. <laughs> not really Xbox at all. Uh, unless they give a date to Indiana Jones, which they haven't done yet. I don't know if I believe that they're just like, ah, things are too crowded. We're going to move it into early 2025. I don't, I don't believe them. I think it's probably just not ready and they're bumping it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. The end of 2024 is busy. I can't speak for any of you, but my backlog, there could be not another game release this year. And I'd have enough to play for the rest of the year. So uh, take your time. The fact is Avowed will now ship in February. I'm excited for it. I am going to play it. Hopefully it's more Fallout New Vegas and less Outer Wilds, which didn't really tickle my pickle quite as much. Uh, And as they mentioned, a live stream that'll focus on Avowed is set for August 23rd if you want to see more about it. It is, like I said, a very Elder Scrolls first person uh, mystical setting game. It's... I think the hope from most people is that this is the Fallout New Vegas uh, of Elder Scrolls games, which would be fucking sick. I don't know if it will be. I think that's high praise, but that would be pretty cool. And I don't even love Follow New Vegas, but I know people do. So hopefully that's what they deliver. We'll see in February. Again, February 18th, it launches on PC and Xbox Series Everything, and it will hit Game Pass day one. Superbangbros.org said there's nothing wrong with them taking their time to make it right, but damn, was I looking forward to dual wielding magic wands. Now, I have a couple of friends that were really excited about Avowed too. So, and again, it's just, such a catch-22 for Xbox because they really need to fucking release some games, man. But they can't be releasing broken games. They gotta be good. Damned if you do and damned if you don't. It's tough. So, 
They put themselves in this spot. It's on them. But about in February now. Uh, Game Pass. Speaking of Game Pass, three new games are coming to Game Pass between now and the middle of August. A couple of notable names in here. They're all hitting cloud console and PC, in case you're wondering. Uh, Tomorrow, on Wednesday, Creatures of Ava hits all versions of Game Pass. I'm not quite sure what that is. August 8th, I know what this is. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. Anyone that probably wants to play it has probably already played it. I've already 100%ed all three of those games. I love Crash Bandicoot. But seeing it on Game Pass is fire. I might scoop it up just to try to go for some trophies. Or part of me, achievements, part of me. Uh, So Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy uh, hits Game Pass on August 8th. And then August 13th, Mafia Definitive Edition. Which last week we talked about there was a rumor that it was going to hit Game Pass. Sounds like it does and it's going to do... Uh, it sounds like it will, and it'll do it next week on August 13th. So those will all be on Game Pass if you are interested. And then finally, to wrap up the Xbox section, a couple weeks ago, we talked about how Microsoft was looking into launching their own mobile game store on iOS and Android, as is Epic and a whole bunch of other companies, because they can now. And now we might have an idea as to what's going to go on said Microsoft store. Windows Central is reporting that a new A game studio is being formed within Blizzard, with a focus on making smaller games based on large Blizzard IPs. It was noted that a majority of the staff at this new studio will be coming over from King. If you don't remember, King was the company that developed that Candy Crush game that did okay. And that was an underrated part of the Activision Blizzard sale. They acquired King. So they got all these people that made one of the most successful mobile games ever, and they're presumably going to come to this new studio and start developing some new Blizzard IP mobile games. No word on if these games will be exclusively mobile, what IPs they're going to focus on or anything, but it makes sense right they spent 70 billion dollars on this merger you got to get it back somehow or acquisition excuse me you got to make it back somehow and mobile games whether we like them or not make money hokey riff said i don't think anyone wants more spin i didn't sigh on my own he put aside his comment hokey riff said i don't think anyone wants more spin-off games designed around microtransactions and gimmicks what we want is warcraft 4 to hell with world of warcraft i want a proper warcraft real real-time strategy game uh, to get this franchise back on track. The thing is, like, listen, I hear you. Like, if Nintendo tomorrow announced a new Punch-Out or F-Zero mobile game, I'd be like, that's not what we want. But the fact that they make as much fucking money as they do means that somebody does. I agree. I think there's a lot of hardcore gamers that kind of turn their nose up at mobile games. I'm I'm one of them, frankly. But they they make so much money. And if Xbox bought this company with one of the biggest game mobile game developers in it and King, and they want to try to recoup some of that 70 billion, I hate it. Mobile game is the way to go. I'm not going to play it. Probably. Well, I shouldn't say that because if it turns out to be like Crash Bandicoot or something, I probably will play it. But anyway, be it's a ways off. It's coming, but it's a ways off. That's all your Xbox news this week. As far as game releases, they're the exact same two games. I just mentioned Pepper Grinder is out now. Steam World Heist 2 is out on Thursday. And then as far as sales on the Xbox Marketplace this week, I got to say, uh, whew, PU is bad. But uh, even though I've already recommended it like a thousand times, XCOM 2 is $4. It is 95% off. It's practically free. It's a really good game. Just keep it in mind. There you go. That's it. Bad sales. Uh, We have one stop left. Everybody knows what it is. Let's switch it up. Well, there's not a ton of news in the world of Nintendo. One of my favorite stories to update you guys on every time I get more information about it has popped up this week. The debate as to whether or not the Nintendo Switch will surpass the PS2 as the best-selling console of all time rages on. And apologies to those of you that don't find it interesting. It fascinates the fuck out of me. To me, the Nintendo Switch trying to catch the PS2 is like Alex Ovechkin chasing down Wayne Gretzky's all-time goal record. I love seeing history like this. Nintendo announced in their last fiscal report that they sold two 2.1 million consoles in the quarter that ended on June 30th. Now, that's down almost 50% from the same quarter in 2023. But to be fair, in that quarter in 2023, a game called The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom launched. They didn't have a big release like that this second quarter. Those sales bring the Nintendo Switch to a grand total of 143.42 million sold. Still sits comfortably in third right now, and it's about 11.5 million back of the PS2 for the all-time best sales spot. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out over the next year or so. We know the next Nintendo Switch is coming. They've already said they will announce their new console before the end of this fiscal year, which is the end of March. So that leaves them eight months between now and the end of this year 
this fiscal year to announce the next Nintendo console. They didn't say it's going to release by then, but they're going to reveal it by then. That's going to hurt Switch sales, right? But they also still have a couple of bullets in their chamber. They've got the new Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. There's a new Mario Party game. There's a new Mario and Luigi game coming out this fall. I don't think any of those are system sellers, but the Switch will continue to just trickle along and probably sell, you know, close to a million a month, give or take. If Nintendo hits their projections for this fiscal year, which again ends in March, they'll be within 600,000 units of the PS2. I don't think they're going to be there, but I do think by the end of March next year, they're going to be within about 2 million consoles of the PS2. So then do they get over that finish line? That's the question. I think the price drop is coming. I think that's going to play a big role. Uh... I just don't, I don't see any more big releases. Maybe they sneak one more in, but I don't know. I think they save whatever's left now for their next system. I think the price, the price drop is what's going to either make or like, if they're going to catch the PS2, it's got to be a price drop. Uh, You know, like I said, they need to sell about 12 million more consoles. And if they sold 2.1 in that last quarter, so that's 2.1 over three months. That's what, about 700,000 a month. They've got eight months left in this quarter. Eight months left, it's 700,000 units a quarter. Is 5.6 million. That still leaves them about 5 million back of the PS2. But I think if they come in with a pretty hefty price drop, which I think happens when they announce the next Switch, uh, I think that's what it'll take. And I, I do think they're going to catch the PS2. I, I really do. The big deal said, this comment made me laugh. The big deal said, can someone just buy 11.5 million Nintendo Switches already so we can move on to the next console? I like that. Well done. Cody Thompson said, doesn't it just blow your mind that in this era of powerhouse systems and graphics that an underpowered, no memory, non-disc playing whatsoever system is going to outsell a system that was essentially needed in every household, not just for the DVD player, but what is considered one of the greatest gaming libraries of all time. I'm on the fence because half of me is surprised that the Nintendo Switch could be the greatest selling system of all time when you're right. It is underpowered by competitor standards. I think what the Nintendo Switch has going for it, though, is the multiples per house. And we've debated this before. I remember we were streaming one day, and I was like, "Do any? Did how many of you own multiple PS2s? And it was like, everybody. So, especially once the PS2 Slim came out, it was so cheap, and the library of games was so insane. So, I don't think you can just chalk the Nintendo Switch's success up to the fact that houses buy three, four, five of them sometimes for all the kids, the parents, whatever the fuck. Uh, but I do think that plays a role in it. And I think that offsets the underpowered thing. And let's be honest, the pandemic helped, man. The pandemic really helped the Nintendo Switch. People were stuck at home with nothing to do, couldn't find a PS5 anywhere. That And then Animal Crossing dropped. That sold some fucking Switches. Uh, it's crazy. I Whether it gets there or not, it's already the greatest selling Nintendo. I mean, I guess technically the DS family is ahead of it, but it's going to go down as Nintendo's most successful system ever. And I do think it's going to catch the PS2. And Captain Black Silver said, I'm very curious to see what they pull out of their pants. A price drop is only going to do so much as the market is already fairly saturated. Perhaps some limited edition themes. Yeah, I think I think it's going to have to be a healthy price drop. And I think we get that price drop maybe not the same day as they announce the next Switch, but close. Uh, I, I Maybe a little bit before, just to try to sell some beforehand. There's still a small part of me that wouldn't be surprised if we got one more Pokemon game this holiday, just because Pokemon equals sales. But I agree. That price drop is going to have to be pretty substantial. Um, the PS2s was toward the end. You can get a PS2 for fucking nothing toward the end. And I think that's what this... Maybe they even just dropped the Switch Lite. Maybe that's the one they drop. But I, I think they're going to do... They want that record. Of course they want that record. And they're going to do everything in their power to get it. So it's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out down the road. I've been saying for two years, I think the Switch is going to catch it. I'm not going to move off that point now, but can't wait to see how it plays out. And then finally for Nintendo news, uh, a new game will be added to the Game Boy Advance library for Nintendo Switch Online subscribers this week. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue Team. It's not one of the mainline Pokemon games. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Red Rescue hits the service on August 9th. I know some of you probably got stoked when you heard Pokemon, but no, no mainline RPGs as of yet. I still think, dude, you know what? I think I made it in my predictions episode at the beginning of the year. That could be your holiday title. I know people don't want to pay for them, but people will. I'm telling you, a compilation of Pokemon Red, Blue, Yellow, and maybe Gen 2 with online, they could sell that at full price, release limited edition Switches, that gets you over that record. I wouldn't be surprised at all if that's what happens. 
between now and Christmas. Uh, I've never played this Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, but apparently you play as a person that becomes a Pokemon, and then you work with other Pokemon to figure out what the fuck happened. The dungeons are randomly generated. It's got some roguelike elements to it. Still features turn-based combat. Remakes of these games were launched on the Switch a couple of years ago. I'm actually slightly interested in this one. I might fire this one up at some point. I'm interested in this. Excuse me. T. Tribuzio said, come on, stop with the lackluster hand job and put the OG red and blues on the service. Mystery Dungeon might be good and I'll give it a shot, but please let us play the OG games. That was basically every comment. And I picked T's because I really like the, lacklux- the lackluster hand job analogy. But uh, I'm, I'm, t- I'm telling you, like, I'm not guaranteeing Pokemon Red and Blue never hit Nintendo Switch Online. But Nintendo's got a tendency to sell us stuff uh, they know that we'll buy. And I'd be shocked if they gave them to us as part of the subscription when they know we'll buy them. I, we will see. But I think they're, I, I think that's their ace in the hole for this holiday season. And Cal C said, this has made my year. I always love the Mystery Dungeon games. Unfortunately, I never managed to get a hold of the GBA one. So I'm really excited to play it. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually really intrigued by this one as well. I don't know what I'll get there, but I'm intrigued by this one. That's it for your Nintendo news. Oh, Quickly, I told everybody last week that while the auction was running, I would keep everybody up to date on that Nintendo World Championships gold cartridge that's currently up for auction over at uh, golden.co. I just looked right now. The auction is still running for 11 days. It ends on August 17th. No bids since the last time we talked about it, so it's still sitting at 160,000 US with an additional 100 or an additional 35,000 in buyer's premiums. But I that that'll hit that'll hit I don't know what I'm going to predict. I'm going to predict 350,000 when it gets off the market, which is crazy. So we'll check in again next week. If you're interested in following it, go to golden, G-O-L-D-I-N dot C-O and just look for Nintendo World Championships. You'll find it. It's up there right now, running for 11 more days. Rarest game there is for the old NES. That is it. As far as game releases on the Switch, the exact same as PlayStation and Xbox. Pepper Grinder and SteamWorld Heist 2. And then as far as sales on the eShop, they're not really doing anything crazy. But I do want to shout out, even though I've recommended these games before, just last week on Expansion Pass, I ranked my top 10 Metroidvanias. And the Guacamelee games made my list pretty high. They're great. They are $4 and $6 Canadian right now. 75% off. Pick them both. If you like Metroidvanias, it's a no-brainer. Pick them both up. Spend the 10 bucks. What's and that's Canadian, so I think they're like ninety nine cents U.S. Scoop them, two great Metroidvania games, the Guacamelees. Uh, there you go. That's it. That's all your news this week. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Sorry it was like twelve hours late, but hey, I made it. It's fine. Uh, I will be back tomorrow on Remember the Game with Donkey Kong sixty four. Finally, well, Thursday on Expansion Pass, I will be reviewing Nintendo World Championships for the Switch, and then on Friday, of course, it'll be the Rambling Idiot. Take it easy, everyone. Talk to you on the next one. Vertical Noise. Play me out. I've got several episodes of experience that makes me an expert. Thanks again for listening. Head over to patreon.com slash remember the game to see what all is waiting for you in our bonus podcast archives. You can add them to any podcast service you want. Listen on Spotify, Apple. I don't know what any of the other ones are, but you can listen to them anywhere you want. Our subscriptions start at just $3 a month. We offer annual subscriptions that'll save you your 12th month fees. 5% of our patron income is donated to Extra Life for the Stollery Children's Hospital here in Edmonton. And uh, all the shows are ad-free over on Patreon. So it's just, it's basically just the biggest win in the history of winning. So patreon.com slash remember the game if you are interested. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you had or have a great weekend whenever the next one comes on your way. And I will talk to you on the next uh, stupid podcast of mine you listen to. Cheers.